It is time for the Riders Block, our weekly look at sports, and this week it's all football. I'm Jenny Carlson here in the studios of the Oklahoman, joined by Cedric Golden in the studios of the Austin American Statesman. Hello, dear friend. What's up, Jay Carr? I, you know, it's November. I guess I should figure we're going to talk football, but it's wall to wall. We're going to start <laughs> with the college football playoff. Uh, the rankings are out again. Uh, you know, the initial rankings, Cedric, I felt like the Big 12 was in pretty good shape. You know, a, a team like Oklahoma State with three losses gets into the top 25, and you think, hey, this, this might work out for the Big 12. But now we see Baylor slipping 13th. They're the lowest undefeated team in the rankings. It seems like the Big 12 is really kind of teetering on either in trouble or completely, uh, you know, sort of on the outskirts of, uh, of the conversation. Obviously, a lot still to play out, but this feels like the Big 12 is, is in a bit of trouble here. Well, to still a line from the old 50s song, it's not the Big 12's party and they can't cry <laughs> if they want to. Big 12's not going to be, be involved in this mix, Jen. I can tell you that now. They just aren't going to be involved. OU losing to K-State closed the deal on that. The Big 12 champion will play in a nice bowl game, but it won't be a CFP game, Jen. Yeah, and it, it just feels like, uh, you know, analysts looking at this, you just see a lot of hurdles between any Big 12 teams getting in. You know, uh, obviously there's going to be some teams that are going to beat each other between, say, Oklahoma and those top four spots, Baylor and those top four spots. But at this point, you know, Cedric, if you think about it, Oklahoma, Baylor, probably the marquee matchup of the weekend, uh, ESPN game day going to be there. So clearly a game that, you know, a lot of people feel like is worth watching. But, you know, if Baylor wins, they've beaten the top 10 team, but now uh, they've beaten a team with two losses. You know, Oklahoma not undefeated. Uh, if Oklahoma wins, they've beaten a top 15 team, but not a top 10 team. Uh, you know, it just, it feels like, you know, even as these Big 12 teams are beating each other, you're just not having the bump like you're seeing with SEC teams or Big 10 teams beating each other. Just not the respect there to bump these teams up into a, a spot where they need to be to get into the playoff. And if you think about it, Jen, if, if Oklahoma were to lose to Baylor on, fr on Saturday and then lose to them again in Jerry World, uh, Baylor, if Baylor runs the table, that's an interesting concept, but their weak schedule at the beginning of the season will probably bite them in the butt. I don't know that Baylor's going to run the table. I don't think they're going to beat OU in Waco. So I, I just I just believe that the Big 12, uh, OU, OU losing to K-State, kill the Big 12. Texas not being very good didn't help OU's cause. Yeah. If OU beats K-State and Texas is a one or two loss team instead of a three loss team, maybe OU's up there in fourth or fifth tied with Georgia and Bama. But here's what I know. LSU just conquered their biggest hurdle. They whooped Alabama like they stole something. So LSU's going to get in. Ohio State is the best team in college football, in my opinion, the most complete team. And Chase Young will be back, the defensive end who's on a suspension. Clemson has a very weak schedule. The ACC is is crap this year. It so is. Clemson's going to get in. Uh, then you got that fourth spot. You got 9-0 Minnesota. You got Bama. You got Oregon. You got Utah. That fourth spot, I hate to say it, is if that goes to Alabama, I'm just going to have to call for an investigation. I don't <laughs> want Alabama in there this year. I'm sorry. And Georgia lost to to South, um, South Georgia Carolina. lost to South yep. Carolina, yep. which lost to App State. So come on. Yeah. So Georgia has no business in that thing either. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out. You know, pretty clearly to me, you know, the committee is, yes, losses are, you know, a, a black mark against you. But to me, it's pretty clearly who you've beat. Um, have you beat enough quality opponents? Have you beat top 10 teams? Have you been top, te beaten top 20 teams? Those, those are really the questions that the committee is leaning heavily on. And, you know, Cedric, you mentioned it. Baylor having a bad non-conference run. And truthfully, you know, when you look at, at these conferences, you know, yes, there's some, there's some teams within the Big 12 hurting each other. But the thing that keeps biting the Big 12 is, A, 
either you know lackluster schedules in the non-conference or B not beating those marquee teams in your non-conference I mean you mentioned Texas Cedric and I don't want to put it all on Texas but it looked, huh. vast, it looked vastly different if Texas had beat LSU. Uh, you know, there's some other teams that had some opportunities to win marquee non-conference games and didn't. Right now, the, the Big 12's really their best non-conference win is K-State over Mississippi State, and Mississippi State is nowhere in the conversation in the SEC. The Big 12 has to beat those non-conference marquee teams when they get the chance, and they just haven't done it. Not this year and really not over the last few years. No, they haven't. You know, I know you carries that banner. And you know, we remember when Texas beat Notre Dame here in Austin. And and I think it was Joe Tessitore said Texas was back. And yeah. uh, they were back to the tune of five and seven. So <laughs> uh, we didn't know that Notre Dame was horrible back then. So they won a couple of marquee games. OU always plays a good non-conference schedule and holds its own in those games. But the Big 12, Texas was its big chance. Texas knocks off LSU in week two. Then we're talking, Jen. Yeah. And maybe Texas is more confident. Maybe maybe that, that that gives them the confidence to go in and win in Dallas. But it didn't. What you see is a 6-3 and three team that's nowhere near the rankings. And uh, teams like OU are suffering as a result. Yeah. A win over Texas is not a big deal this year in the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, it's been – it's. It's been entertaining, or at least for me, Cedric, to watch as, you know, these different Big 12 teams have beat each other and, you know, to see Baylor emerge. You know, it's only been two years since they won one game in Matt Rule's first season in Waco. So their turnaround has been dramatic. You know, there's been so many close games. There's been overtime games. We saw the nail-biter between Oklahoma and Iowa State. I mean, we've been entertained by the Big 12 but at the same time, it hasn't helped their playoff hopes in the least. So uh, I think that this this latest ranking really bodes poorly for the Big 12. You know, even if you do have a Baylor win out or an Oklahoma win out, I just don't see how it's going to happen. It, it feels very, very hard, the road between where they are now and one of those top four spots.